17. And just note that uh, Councillor Valerian is uh, unable to join us today. He's still away, and that's with the uh, consent of the council. Um, and uh, hopefully things are progressing with uh, their family. Ask for a motion to approve the agenda, please. Councillor White, thank you. Councillor Sanjango, all in favor? That's carried. Uh, just one set of minutes to adopt there from the November 3rd meeting. I just ask for a motion to adopt those minutes as well. Councillor White, thank you. Councillor Sanjango, thank you. All in favor? That's carried. Oh, welcome, uh, Anne and Pat. And, uh, I'm going to share the results of the uh, this is a tremendous amount of work that you've been doing. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor Rowe and councillors for having us tonight. Um, we are uh, the co-chairs of the Community Resource Centre, and we're here this evening to bring your focus to the Progress Plan for Women's Economic Well-Being that was developed over a three-year period. So it started in March 2013 and was launched in March 2015. Right? Oh, 12. 12. I knew there was something wrong with that. Um, uh, um, it resulted in the progress plan. You have a copy of the executive summary, and we're leaving you with a copy of the full plan. Um, this was developed using a broad, exhaustive community development approach with, the, with over 4,500 inputs from close constituents. So we can stand here or sit here before you knowing that the plan is truly representative of the issues, barriers, and solutions described and vetted by the women and men that participated, including some of you. So why are we here? As you may know, the Community Resource Centre is run by a working board of seven that acts as an executive director. We have one part-time staff, our program manager, Christabel Cuxcardo, and we have core funding from gaming of $35,000. In order to make our work run, the board members share portfolios as part of our responsibilities. Anne and I were tagged for giving direction to the 294,000 Status of Women grant that resulted in the community plan. Post-launch, we agreed to follow up, the, you know, the funding's done, but we wanted to follow up and bring to your attention the recommendations that would speak to you within your respective sphere of influence. So, we have a look at your strategic objectives and actions for 2015, and we're delighted to see how many of these align with priority recommended actions from the progress plan? The strategic objectives in your 250 plan, excellence in community engagement and leadership, and sustainable asset management are the objectives that most closely align with the recommendations. So let's talk about the excellence in community engagement. As I mentioned, the recommendations from the progress plan came from a series of community and individual consultations and surveys. Our board and staff attended the Powerhouse talks on Saturday and were introduced to a new spin on the language of change. One presenter asked the audience, are you ready to spare some change? If your board or your council is ready to spare some change, then we want to underline the importance of your objective to foster community participation in vision setting and decision making. Using this approach will deliver the message that you are ready to listen and take action within your sphere of influence. This will result in change of some sort Skilling up and budgeting for this approach will be a challenge in this time of restraint. But rest assured, it will be an investment in future good planning and decision making. Reviewing and taking action on the relevant program plan recommendations in the development of your strategic plan 
will save you time and money so you'll have some actual spare change. You've identified that you're prepared to take leadership in regional and community cooperation. As you review recommendations for adult and child care, uh, child and adult care, economic development and employment, you will find opportunities for courageous leadership and we challenge you to take them. A key ask for us at this time is for leadership in the area of older adults. The Coast has now a seniors planning table in place to attempt to get this community up to speed in collaboration around meeting the onslaught of needs surfacing around the rapid increase of the older adult demographic. And we'll speak specifically to this, but suffice to say that without municipal and regional collaboration, we risk a return to a community that sees the growth of our older adult population as a problem, not an exciting opportunity. Perhaps not natural cap capital, as Manny would say, as defined, but human capital or capital nonetheless. Be sure to budget for effective community engagement processes around projects, or developmental plans that come forward to you. And then just to touch on sustainable asset management, transportation was the number one issue identified from women and men as a barrier to economic well-being. Maybe you can spare some change on this one. Many of your 2015 actions speak to transportation. Is there a way of thinking about transportation on the coast differently. Recommendations in the progress plan ask you to focus on collaboration with other municipal governments, and we know that you do that to some extent. But to research those needs, the services, multimodal integration, and participation with a wide range of voices in a solution-focused ferry advisory group. Just before I start, I get, I get the good job. I get to talk about the successes. Um, but you'll notice in your, in, in your executive summary, it's really well laid out. The issues are on one side with the recommendations on the other. So it, it's really helpful when uh, taking a look at that. Um, the successes out of the uh, progress plan have come by way of organizations doing what they can <coughs> within their sphere of influence and collectively influence that collective influence has been great. Uh, the very first success was the plan itself. Having three-year funding allowed one year to actively connect with women and men up and down the coast, then put their priorities to concrete action. And by keeping the community engaged at every step along the way, we got their input, a true community development approach. Under your taking leadership in regional and community cooperation in your strategic objectives, the town of Gibson did just that. You were the first, as Pat said, to spare some change and take leadership within your sphere of influence in recognizing that you could, could through the final revisions of your OCP, include the CRC's progress plan, identified needs of women's employment, child care, care for older adults, and transportation. You were the first organization to really embody the work of the progress plan within your processes. We can't thank you enough for that, and believe me, we've taken every opportunity to showcase it to everybody else. So thank you. Thank you to your board for being present as a member of community meetings surrounding the progress plan. And just knowing where to get access to information was a barrier identified in the plan. Thank you for the grant and aid that you funded the CRC for professional development opportunity for information and referral individuals in area E, F, and Gibsons. We know so well the incredible successes out of area A and B, which were funded from their economic dollars. And we're looking forward to the reports from area E, F, and Gibsons that will be out in a couple of months. 
This will mean that we will have information and referral hubs established up and down the coast. Hubs in Pender, Hatton Bay, Seashell, areas E and F, and the town of Gibson. The superintendent of schools, Patrick Bocking, was involved in the advisory committee for the progress plan. When childcare became one of the issues, he jumped on the opportunity to support women by providing 70 child care spaces in two schools with expanded hours on a bus route, one in Gibson's and one in Seashell. The YWCA is the contractor. The plan led to the development of the influential self-employed women's network. The Community Resource Center applied for further funding for self-employed women with isolation being the barrier. We've hired a contractor and we're now up and running with another two and a half year project. The progress plan and the new Connecting Women for Success project will be invaluable resources when developing your regional economic committee. We would welcome collaboration with that committee. The seniors planning table is up and running thanks to one year funding from the Community Foundation. There are more than 20 organizations and the involvement in over 50 individuals some not connected with any organization. As well, there are six priority uh, area action teams up and running. The seniors planning table has made a very well received presentation to the District of Seashells and we strongly suggest that you be thoroughly briefed on the reach and the depth of the work of the seniors planning table. These efforts, however, um, need to be sustained through collaborative funding from all Sunshine Coast governments. And we're beginning to look at a model, um, a three-year MOU model, much the same as housing has been over the last couple of years. And we're moving forward to an intergovernmental meeting in January at the request of the District of Seashell. It isn't every day that a rural string of communities such as ours receives $454,000 over five and a half years to address economic well-being for women. Much thanks goes to the status of women for funding the Community Resource Centre, $293,000 over three years, followed up by another $164,000 over two and a half years, especially at a time when the economy is so top of mind here on the coast. But the individuals we'd like to thank the most are the women and the men who stepped up at every opportunity to have input into the progress plan. They came out in numbers we never anticipated. <coughs> every community meeting was at cap capacity. And for our final lunch, launch, we had to change the venue in order to accommodate the people who signed up. Please know your constituents have clearly stated their needs. The Community Resource Centre Board and staff are very proud of the results. And we're here to hand you a $293,000 plan that your constituents have played a key role in developing through a community development process. And we're handing it to you for free. Please continue to make good use of it. So along with the executive summaries, I have one full copy of the plan for your planning department and one for your CAO. And the board have already received theirs. Thank you and hope you have questions. Thank you. And, uh, it's a tremendous amount of work that uh, you've done there. And uh, the one word that you did mention uh, tends to be a bit of an overused word in many cases, but sustained. And, and you know, quite often we can launch things and then we, they peter out because we can't sustain them somehow. And that's, that's certainly key to uh, the success of what, uh, what you've already sort of uh, developed. Um, comments, answers, and agenda? Yeah. I'll just make a couple of comments. Nothing that I haven't said to you, to you before, but you know, thank you to the CRC for the leadership. In, in this is a huge project, a huge undertaking, a huge amount of funding to you know, coordinate, and and uh, and I I was at a number of the the meetings, and it was truly uh, representative of of you know a lot of participation from 
a lot of different members of the community. Um, and I'm excited to see that, you know, funding was given a second time. That speaks a lot to your organization. Um, I'm proud to sit on the SOME network and do my part to help in the sustainability of the project that, as it moves forward. But I like how, uh, how you've taken that <coughs> the initiative to work in with other organizations and make sure that people know the roles that they need to keep in order for this plan take traction and, and uh, move on from, from here. So um, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for taking the time to come and share thank that. Thank you for with having us. us. And yeah. if there's at any point in time, if you uh, have any questions or as you're developing your 200, uh, two, two thousand uh, strategic plan, need any other material, any of our research, any of that sort of thing. Um, oh, words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd be happy to help. Thank yeah. you. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Uh, 8.1.1. It's a motion to uh, receive the minutes of the day of the whole meeting of the November 17th meeting. So, Council Council London. Turn all in favor. Yes, Terry. 8.1.2. Come out of that meeting. We'll just to, uh, provide a follow up uh, workshop on affordable housing so that can be funding. Uh, moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Monday. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Okay, and that's carried. 8.1.3, affordable market rental housing proposal. So that's uh, over on Gibson's Way, uh, just over the other side of the Legion area there. And uh, really wasn't anything that was really concrete being brought to us at this point in terms of that. Proposal, but what what they're looking at is creating essentially affordable uh, rental apartments there, uh, which uh, council has certainly identified as a uh, as a real need in the community. So these are just there for um, moving forward. I guess some of the things that would be taken consideration by staff, but there's other than that, that's really all that's just signaling. Them an intention uh, to uh, try to work creatively with the property owners to, uh, in fact, get some affordable rental housing in the town. So with that, um, just ask for a motion then for that particular recommendation. Councilor White, thank you. Second, Councilor Sanjanko. Further discussion, okay, all in favor? That's carried. Uh, 8.1.4, uh, this is the uh, cash and loop proposal for affordable housing and parkland. To make the payment of $93,758.57 for the affordable housing uh, reserve fund. And then we'll let, uh, and the other part of that would be to lift the uh, covenant so they can proceed with the development. Then. Move of that, please. Councilor Sandenko, second it. Councilor White, further discussion. All in favor? That's carried. Uh, 8.1.5 doesn't need a resolution that was already dealt with today. Uh, inquiries at this point. 11.1, uh, .1, see the Sky Clean Air Society membership. And just uh, motion recommendation to receive a report and to continue uh, or renew the membership of the town and that society. Heard of that, Councilor Sanjanko, second. Councilor Lovely, open discussion. Councilor White. You mentioned collaborating with the Clean Air Society earlier today, and I assume that means this. Which is. I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I do want to point out that. Uh,
Yeah, I'm not sure how long you've been participating in this one, and I don't know if you know off the top of your head either. It seems to me it's been a while. It has been. I think actually we might even be one of the kind of founding partners in that program. I think it goes back to oh, at least 2010, maybe 2009. It's been a number of years. Yeah, I, I just um, further to what you were alluding to, uh, you're right, the CAO has been uh, working with this group and actually the, I think it's the Ministry of Environment, and um, in the process of trying to find a location within the town to set up an air uh, monitoring uh, device. Um, you know, there's been some question about whether, you know, the one at Lyondale is sufficient for uh, telling us what's going on within the town. So the, um, uh, this organization has been working with us and with the uh, with the town to, or sorry, with the ministry uh, to find a location. I know they've scouted out two or three locations in the last uh, week and just sort of waiting to see the word that we might be able to set that down. But it's uh, given, um, you know, much of the uh, proposed activities around how sound certainly is uh, something that uh, we'd like to have in place. Um, so I, I hear what you're you're saying, but I think uh, that at this point, um, uh, certainly I think uh, I don't see any reason not to sort of continue on with them to support them. I just wanted to confirm that there's some value to it. Organization, because when we do have a lot of nonprofit interest and collaborate, yeah, I do think that that is there. Yeah, that'll be points well taken. All right, so just the mover of that to recommendation then. Councillor White, Councillor Lumley second, all in favor, and that's carried. Uh, okay, 12.1. Revenue anticipation bylaw, which is here for second and third reading. And uh, that's basically the one just to set up the line of credit, essentially. So, again, I'll just ask for a motion on that one, please. Councillor Lumley, Councillor Sandenko, discussion, all in favor. And that's carried. 12.2 grades, fees, and charges amendment bylaw for a second and third reading. Um, again, this is because of some minor changes in some of the uh, uh, various themes and so on that we've been through a couple of times. Okay, so again, I'll ask for a word of that, please. Councilor White, Councilor Zinko, all in favor? That's carried. 12.3, Park Acquisition Reserve Fund Transfer. So this is the one to uh, move the funds from the uh, Park Acquisition Reserve Fund to the Capital uh, Project Reserve Fund. And this is here for second and third reading. All right, with this, with proceeds at this point, then Ian, uh, you have to make a submission to the um, Minister of Community, and whatever they call themselves these days. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Can you move that, Councillor? Yeah, I'll move that. Councillor, let, let me get a second and then we'll uh, second Councillor Sanjanko. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to question the timing on it too. I mean, we've, we have been working on this for. Uh, about even where we allocate this money, what it is, maybe, I guess. Uh, first, the, it's the timing of, of For you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the submission will be made tomorrow. Uh, the, the process is to submit uh, the bylaw to the minister for approval after third reading. So that tells the minister that we you know, had a discussion and, and are serious about uh, moving forward. So uh, the, the, the request that we're on the supporting uh, documentation will go off tomorrow. And then um, it's, you know, whatever the timeline is. Moved and seconded then. Any further discussion? All in favor then? Okay, that's carried. So thank you, Ian. Uh, 2015 financial plan amendment bylaw. Um, the director of 
finance has set out in its uh, report the reasons why you have to. Some changes in the capital expenditures during the year. Um, does anyone have any uh, questions for the director um, with respect to the, uh, the report? Anything you wish to amplify on Ian at all? No? Thank you. Bill Civilly has your yeah. And this is just for first reading this, this evening, so we'll be coming back before us again. So we can move out of that. And Councillor White, second then. Councillor Tanjenko, for the discussion. All in favor? That's carried. Um, Ian, I would ask you 12.5 uh, just maybe to speak briefly to your report there. Thank you, Mayor Rowe. So the, this is a, uh, a report that typically comes before council at this stage of the, uh, of the year. So uh, capital plans that we approved with the financial plan back in May uh, had a list of several projects that were being funded by development cost charges. And the community charter requires that whenever statutorily uh, reserved funds such as the cost charges are to be spent then the monies uh, are so released through uh, DCC bylaws so there's four of them on the list tonight uh, drainage road water and sewer and the report indicates uh, under each of those categories what the projects were uh, identified and how much was to be uh, released out of each of those statutory reserve funds there's a table, uh, or figure one, uh, on, on the report that uh, gives a opening and projected <coughs> closing balance of our DCC funds. And as you can see, um, fair use of DCC funds this year uh, for the projects that we've uh, undertaken. And uh, our roads and water reserve funds will be um, severely depleted at this particular juncture um, and we will have those um, replenished as development occurs um, in the future. So uh, again, DCCs are specifically uh, levied against development when uh, it occurs in the, in the town and then these funds can only be used on against projects that were identified as DCC projects. So again, it's very um, strictly uh, reviewed and controlled uh, both by us and by, by the ministry when they approve uh, what the DCC rates are. Thank you. Any questions on that? Not so um, when when you allocate or when you collect DCCs, it just seems that, well, like you said, like the water and the roads fund are, are drastically uh, reduced, but the like the drainage fund is like fairly massive, right? So are these like allocations, like when you're collecting DCCs, like you're immediately allocating it to these specific funds, and then it's in there and can only be used for drainage on several other projects down the road relating to DCCs. Is that part of the DCC review process then? Is that, like, would you look at that and go, wow, like, you know, maybe our DCC for drainage is a little skewed? Is that part of this upcoming or this review that we're doing? Yes, we are doing a DCC re uh, bylaw review this year, and all of this sort of information will be uh, taken into consideration in, in just determining what the future rates are going to be. Um, but, so the drainage. Reserve fund, just there hasn't been the, uh, the need, and I'm not sure where that's. I have to look at the five year plan to see uh, the projects that are on, on, on the list for the future development, the future spending. Okay. Uh, no, part well, no, and then I start speaking. Um, uh, some, some of that we've got some fairly significant size projects on the DCC list, and, and uh, they're perhaps five years out or, or what have you, and uh, you know seven hundred thousand dollars wouldn't uh, wouldn't actually touch them. Uh, so you know just because we have money in the bank, it doesn't mean we don't have a project out there. For the least. Yeah, 
no further questions on this one. I would actually entertain a motion to receive the report and give first reading to 12.5, 12.6, 12.7, and 12.8. Second. Councilor Lundin. All in favor then? Okay, that's carried as well. Thank you for that report. Any inquiries at this point? My name is Kim Janik. I live in Gibson. My question is related to item number 8.1.3, the affordable market rental housing proposal. I noticed in the last little bullet there, they're asking, Council is showing a willingness to consider a request for financial support with regards to the affordable housing component. Yeah. No, that's a very good question that you raised there. This particular proponent, I think the number was around 10,000. I recall that it was part of the submission that they were making to us as to why this was going to be good for the community, the affordable rental housing and so on. Could there be a contribution from the town's affordable housing fund to alleviate some of this? Now, I have to say that that one wasn't really comfortably received by Council, shall we say. It's in there for discussion, but I wouldn't take that one to the bank. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, Council, my name is Judith Bonkoff. I live in Gibson. My question is on park acquisition reserve fund transfer. And I'm a little bit miffed about this whole fund. And I'm a little bit confused on how long it's taken us to accrue that amount of money. How long have we been saving that money? Very well. The fund was actually created in, I think it was 1989, but it sat idle for a time being. There's only been a few contributions through the years to that, through developers, from developers. And then the rest of it has just been accrued through interest because the money has just been sitting there. There's never been any money spent out of that fund, which you can only spend money for park acquisitions, not for maintenance or upgrades. So by depleting this fund, we are getting rid of a parks acquisition fund, which means that how long will it take us to save that money again? The fund itself will still be maintained. So, for example, there's a development up on Reed Road at the end of Aurora Way that's about to come on stream. And part of what they have to do is provide either parks or funds. I'm not quite sure how that one's going to unfold yet, but there will be funds that will continue to come into the park fund. So we're starting back at square one? Yes. What about the George? Has it got a huge big amount going into that park acquisition? I don't recall. No, because it was not a subdivision. Oh, it's not a subdivision. That's right. Created through subdivision. Sorry, that's right. Park dedication is only required when there's an actual subdivision, and so that's when they have to provide it. So, for example, up at Gospel Rock, although there's no application before us at the present time, the previous council had identified about three areas for park dedication if and when a proposal comes forward for that one. Okay, so I guess I would just, I'm understanding that that money is supposed to go to the public market, and I'm wondering how that could be considered a park, and I realize that you are transferring the money, so then it doesn't actually have to go to a park if you get a transfer. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. If it goes into the capital projects fund, then council can determine what to do with that, although there are constraints. It still has to be sort of a capital type of project as opposed to just operations. 
So when you look at the resolution that council had made about those funds, you'll see that we'll be discussing with the market what that looks like in terms of how it's going to be reflected for the town. The town right now has a 38% interest in the property, and we're looking to increase that through these funds. That property eventually will be a town-owned asset. The constitution of the Gibson Public Market Society, or what I guess it's called, Gibson Building Community, Community Building Society, has an unalterable provision in it that if and when that organization ever dissolves, that that property reverts entirely to the town. So it's that zeroes to 38%? Actually, no. No, the town has no obligation on the debt at all. Okay, so there's just one other thing. I'm not representing any other group. I'm not in the gallery anymore as far as on the board. So this is just an independent thing, but I was in front of you guys asking for money for the art gallery. And I would just love this to be opened up to more groups as far as the money. Thank you. And that was a great event on Saturday. It was. You guys have certainly made it a center of the discussion. Okay, council report, council session. Just a few things to report on from the last couple of weeks. I had the opportunity to get a gathering when Minister Sherby spoke, and also to be at the public market when CIBC made their check presentation to the market as well. Sunshine Coast Tourism had their annual AGM. Great to see things moving forward for that organization. They're all waiting to see if the hotel can go through this year. Of course, Remembrance Day ceremony is very special this year. Yeah, Councilor Sanjanko mentioned a couple of things that are at the public market. Thanks to CIBC for their donation of $100,000 to that project. Getting donations from banks is unbelievably difficult, so it was really, really appreciated. Sunshine Coast Tourism, also there for their AGM. I'm optimistic that they're making progress on the potential for the hotel tax. They seem to be getting the ducks lined up that are needed. As I just mentioned, Ms. Montauk was at the Gibson Public Art Gallery on Saturday for the Tony Mitchell exhibition opening on it. It's wall-to-wall people. It's really, really great, so thank you for that. Also, along with Councilor White, attended the Gibson Fire Department's annual dinner on Saturday. An opportunity to thank the members for what they do for us. And again, I'll keep emphasizing the need for recruits. There's definitely some members that are being lost as a result of the layoffs that have some fault in paper. So anybody that's interested, please do contact the Fire Department. This coming Saturday, Salvation Army kicks off its cattle campaign. And the Rotary Club also has its annual auction. And I just want to mention that on Friday from 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock, the town is cooperating with the Open Door Group and the Ministry of Jobs and Tourism to hold a job fair at the Gibson's Rec Center there. This is primarily to try to find work and places for people that have been affected by the layoffs and have some fault in paper, but certainly for anyone else that is interested. So I hope people will come out and I hope we can do something for them. The most we can do at this point, I guess, is on a local basis. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you
Okay, so with that, there's about a couple of small items we need to deal with under um, closing the meeting here under uh, 90. Uh, Eugene King just asked for a motion to close, please. Councillor White, Councillor Sandinko, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you very much.